Hey everyone, welcome back to That's No Moon. Uh, when the Blair Witch Project came out, it was pretty much the godfather of the found footage genre. The film came out, people thought it was real, people were like, holy shit, you know, this actually happened. Didn't happen, it's just the movie filmed entirely with video cameras from someone's point of view. We haven't seen that a million times before. Well, we hadn't back then, we have now, and we have the Blair Witch Project thanks for the countless amount of crappy Paranormal Activity sequels and crappy rip-offs. But... The fan footage format has returned back to its form with Blair Witch, which is a sequel to the Blair Witch Project, but kind of a reboot in a way. Um, so the plot follows a character whose sister was Heather from the Blair Witch Project, and he wants to, you know, find her again. He thinks she's still out there. So him and a group of people, including some YouTubers and uh, just just some general, you know, teenage people go out into the woods to find the Blair Witch or find Heather because you know, this guy on, on the YouTubes, he's like, hey, you know, the Blair Witch is real. I have videos on my channel, but he seems like kind of a suspicious guy. And then they go out there, they're filming, and that's basically it. Um, which, you know, it would have been an interesting premise, you know, when the Blair Witch Project came out, if they bought this out directly after. I know they bought out a crappy sequel that nobody cared about. But you know, this would have been a good concept, but I just walked in and I was like, yeah, I've seen this a million times before. How can they make this anything different to what we've already seen? And it's not anything different. You've seen it a million times before. It's a typical horror film, but it has its enjoyment. Now, I'll say it's not the scariest film I've seen this year. Actually, there hasn't been many scary films this year, but I'd say it's it's not the scariest. And it's not the best horror film I've seen this year. I've seen some shockingly bad horror films, and it doesn't compare to those. But I've also seen some very good horror films, and it doesn't compare to those either. Now, the problem with seeing so many films, I've seen over 100 just this year already. And the problem with seeing so many is that there's nothing that original anymore out there. You, there's nothing really that I haven't seen in terms of cinema. And that was... It's not this film's fault. But it's just... That's the problem with seeing so many movies. You, you kind of learn to compare them to other things and you will compare this to films like Paranormal Activity that do the same thing over and over again. But this one did have its sort of... It had the modern twist to it. There was like a drone that was flying around and filming because in, in sort of found footage horror films it's always like they're continuously filming, the, the batteries don't die and there's no way they could have filmed from this angle and this angle. But in this one they've got so many different cameras. They've got a drone, they've got head cams, so they actually explain quite a lot and you actually see them charging the batteries on the camera which is something that I like seeing. Now in terms of horror, it does have some very, very scary moments. But they're more, like, they're rather jump scares but I'd say they're more tension filled but they're not like don't breathe where the tension's like, it's building up, it's building up. They're sort of short tension moments and the horror happens and it's effective in points but at some points it's like, yeah I saw that coming from a mile off. And by the time the ending comes, you're sort of thinking, okay, there's nothing entirely new here that I haven't seen. I saw all of this coming. I knew this was going to happen. And I knew it would happen this way. But there is one moment in the film that actually I was sort of like, oh, I felt so uncomfortable. I was like, okay, this, this is something that I don't want to be watching. I want to be leaving right now. Uh, I'll compare it to Game of Thrones. Uh, Battle of the Bastards, there's that one scene where Jon Snow's underneath all these guys and he's being trampled and suffocated. And you really feel like you're there and you're suffocating with him. Well, in this, one of the girls in the film, she goes through the big Blair Witch house that's the centerpiece of the movie. And it's in the climax and she's crawling through this underground tunnel and she gets stuck in this tunnel. And the Blair Witch is sort of lurking around behind her and you're like, oh, okay, because you feel like you're there. And the thing with what I mentioned with Jon Snow, that one, it made me feel uncomfortable. I was suffocating with him, but this one was just more realistic because it's one person and it's something that can actually happen. And she was there. She was like not able to move. She was panicking and I was feeling like I was panicking as well because she was panicking. And it was just the fact that the claustrophobia in this film, it really adds to the scares and the tension. It's not something that I can say, you know, didn't make me uncomfortable because I'd be lying if I did and that's the sort of things that I liked out of the movie just the uncomfortable tension filled moments that really sort of it, it puts you on the edge of your seat and it puts you in the shoes of the character that they're trying to sort of well I guess kill off in a way I mean um 
Because that's what these movies are about, right? But yeah, uh, one of the scariest things about the first one is the fact you don't see the Blair Witch. And in this one, you kind of do. Which, uh, I guess they didn't show her full on. But it was like, I could have done without seeing what we did see. Because she kind of looked a bit unrealistic. But uh, it's not really a gripe. You knew it was going to happen. At least they didn't do a CGI fuckfest like they do did with the Paranormal Activity Ghost in the, in the latest one. Where they actually showed it full on throughout the whole movie. Because the scariest part of those was not seeing the ghost. And when you actually see the thing that they're trying not to show you and trying to scare you with, it just, it takes away from the film. But uh, I'm glad that they didn't full-on show it in this film. They didn't, like, because a lot of films have that cop-out ending where the camera drops and the ghost or the demon or whatever jumps towards the camera and it's supposed to scare you. They didn't do it with this one, which I'm glad about. And they did keep to the sort of found footage, you know, like, if this, like, the, the most unrealistic thing about this is that if you found the footage, it's not like it could be edited in such a perfect way. It's not like you could find all the footage. I mean, I'm pretty sure some of the cameras got smashed anyway. But I like that they kept it consistent and actually explained how they were filming all of this different footage. It just, it worked for me. So I'll say not a perfect horror at all. I've seen much better, but it was very enjoyable. And as a horror film, it stands on its own two feet. It doesn't have to, you, know, you don't have to see the first one to enjoy this one. And I'll say that is a good thing because when you've got these films that are full of war and everything, I mean, I like that. I like seeing films and then it leads into another film. And But with this one, at least you can watch it on its own if you don't have the time to watch the first one. I don't want to watch the first one. I'll say if you want to escape into a horror, then check it out. But like, if I, if I didn't have my limited card and I wasn't going for free, then I wouldn't pay for it. But it's, it's worth seeing, I'd say. So Blair Witch, not the perfect film. But not a bad film by any means. I'd say, yeah, give this one a go. I'll see you guys in the next video.